and welcome to Chaotic Risk TV. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and our guest today is uh, drummer Tommy Spano from the band Second Skin. Now, um, Tommy, how long has the band been together? Oh, wow. Um, I'd have to say at least like 10, 11 years or so. Are you you're an original member? Yes, I am the original member. We had a couple other guys in the beginning, and, uh, you know, after a while, you learn who fits and who don't, and so we got everybody else in place, and uh, now we're very happy, and it's a uh, it's a good unit, man. You know. And I gotta say, you know, um, uh, when I got the press release from the publicist about the band, um, one thing that really stood out was the band's logo, the name, cool looking logo, and I love the fact okay. um, didn't go with the obvious spelling of the name. That's pretty cool. Talk a little bit about how you guys came up with um, that all. Um, well, it, it, the name actually was um, spelt the correct way at first, but then uh, I guess. There was uh, another band okay. uh, somewhere that they were threatening us with uh, legal stuff, and oh. uh, we were a band. We were we were the band for a couple of years at that point. We had T-shirts and we were wow. built. Wow. So it's like you know we uh, we're like you know what? Let's just change the the spelling a little bit and you know yeah, we'll yeah. go with the name. So we added a little K Y and it smoothed everything out, man. <laughs> I think I think it it works for you guys. So you know maybe. Um... Maybe it was a good thing, I guess. But um, you know, I, I we're talking today about the new single, which is for the single, the song, and the video for "Small." Um, cool looking video. I urge people to go on YouTube and check that out now. Um, awesome. What's interesting watching the video? Great performance piece. But um, I love the fact that you know, being that you're a drummer, Tommy, you're not like your drum set isn't behind the other guys. You know, you, you're you're just as much in the front of the video as other guys. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, I use I I dude over the years, man. I, I always stuck to my guns, you know. Uh, you know when um everybody was starting to do the grunge stuff and the rap rock stuff and everything, everybody's using smaller four piece kits. I always, you know, I was a big fan of uh the brick wall Vinnie Paul from Pantera with the uh, two kick drums. I'm a taller, bigger guy too, man. So like I look like McGilla Gorilla behind a little tiny drums, even a normal size drum set. So I use all like 24, 18 kick drums and my toms are all oversized. And, and you I like, definitely got the Vinnie Paul thing going for you. I'll say that. You ever been mistaken for him, you know, when he was alive? <laughs> He's definitely uh, one of my big influences. Him, Sean Kinney from Alice in Chains and uh, uh, so many other guys, man. Uh, Tommy Aldridge from, uh, you know. You know I can see like, that. I can see that. White Snake, Ozzy, Black Oak, Arkansas. You know, um, yeah, just watching the video, that, that's another thing that really stood out was not just, um, I could tell you're a powerhouse drummer, but well, again, the, you're kind of like your 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 force is kind of felt, you know. Even in in the video, I mean, I kind of um, liken it to Carmine a piece. I mean, great legendary drummer, but you know, like Carmine, when I interviewed him, he told me, he says my approach to drumming, no matter what band I'm playing in, um, is to be over the top. I want I my my approach is to like I want to bring the drums to the front of the stage. I I want people paying attention to me and and you look at any band he's been in and he's, he's i think accomplished that yeah uh vinnie vinnie and and carmine uh both of those guys are amazing drummers i actually ran into uh vinnie a few years back at um it was a horror con in atlantic city new jersey and uh, we're hanging chatting for a little bit really nice guy I, I met him actually a few years before that and carmine at the um right by you where you are um okay. at the yeah. uh Man? The Nan show, yes, in Anaheim. Thank you. I'm well, a little... coming back this year. Um, you think you might be attending? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna try if schedules work out with shows and uh, different things. If we can get out there, we're definitely gonna get out there. You know, the yeah, whole corona, again, yeah. the whole corona apocalypse stuff, kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah for a, while. Strong, a lot of things. <laughs> the video and the single. I, I gotta tell you, a powerful song. The video is very powerful. I understand it's about kind of um fighting depression person being at like a really dark part uh dark dark place in their life um yeah we all yeah. go through those uh, moments in life have you ever had um was i guess what i'm asking was it based on anybody's in the band's experience or just kind of a general um thing uh, I, go think, I think you know between all of us we all have our own different uh things we got, went through and been through um more so some than others uh but um yeah, you know, nothing we Jesse definitely tries to keep the lyrics open to where it can reach a lot of different people and not just one specific thing. Sure, sure. 
so we try we try and do that definitely um with the music and uh yeah so um it definitely uh you know we all had our different things between girlfriends or addiction or whatever it may be you know uh it comes out in the music you know and i was reading a press release that it's also about people maybe that deal with loneliness um and um i i guess um, being in a band is kind of um one way to um not be lonely i mean uh, of course you go through lonely times in your life but i imagine that's what makes being in a band so fun that, that you get together with your bandmates you get to go out and play a show you get to go out and create new music yeah yeah unless you live in new jersey during the corona apocalypse and you they don't want you they close everything down they don't let you go nowhere <laughs> yeah. well i i know what you're going through brother because um maybe <laughs> from california we had a governor who got on tv and bragged about that he was proud of the fact that um he locked everything down, and he at one point was talking crap about um, as long as he was governor, there was never going to be um, any live concert events ever again. Luckily, it did not come to that, but, you know, there was that then fear. They week, then they catch him a week later getting his uh, hair done at a salon or something. Yeah, you know? there you go. Yeah, but, you know, there was that fear, especially if you're a working musician, even music fans, that were we ever going to get to leave our house? Were we ever going to get to uh, experience a live concert again? I mean... There was a time when um, we weren't sure, you know, and thank God it came back, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 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 So, uh, talk about the new album. It's called Letting Go. Um, do you have an official release date yet for that? Um, excuse me. I'm sorry. One more time. The new album. I was wondering, um, it's called Letting Go. Do we have an official release date for that? I believe uh, it's September... 22nd maybe okay okay, okay. yeah i'm pretty sure so I'm, I'm i'm bad with uh Sometime in September, I'm, a we'll just say. Yeah. I'm a drummer i can only count the four you know no i'm just kidding yeah, 16 yeah. but uh no I, I i believe uh it's the uh 22nd and we also um we have a gig with the band sponge wow yeah um, and actually in seaside uh seaside heights over here not too yeah, far from. And again, you guys are no doubt a metal band. I thought it was kind of cool sounding to hear that you're from, uh, what is it, Fort um, Fort River, New Jersey. I mean, if that's not metal sounding, I don't know. <laughs> Fork and River, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fork and River. Funny story. We had a uh, a great uh, Chad Lee do our photos for us uh, a few years back, and uh, he would call it Fork and Rover. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, Forked River, that's where we rehearse. I'm from Tom's River, which is a few towns north. Okay. Uh, a couple guys are from uh, like Point Pleasant, which is a, about a half hour north. And Zach, our uh, guitarist, he's west over by like towards I guess, towards the Philly area, you know, like, but still in Jersey. Yeah, but, you know, um, when people think of New Jersey, they typically think of like um, obviously Bon Jovi or Hometown Heroes, Bruce Springsteen. But um, you know, even <laughs> Zach Wiles from New Jersey, but um was, was there Jackson, much of a Jackson, that's Jackson, which is a couple towns over. I used to actually grew up living there and uh and uh so did Mark in the band, Mark Monjoy. He grew up in Jackson. I grew up in but, Jackson. But like was was there um when you were growing up, was there much of a metal scene there or has there become more of one over the years? Oh in Jackson, you mean? Like well, just where you guys are from or you know where you grew up. Now I now or when we were younger, you mean? I guess compared to compare it from when you were growing up to now. When we were growing up, you know, it was like, it was great. There was a lot of burnouts and metalheads and everything. You know, now everybody wants to get everybody, younger kids coming up. Not all of them, but yeah, yeah. most want to be a rapper, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I don't get it, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I do see some younger kids um, getting into hard rock and metal and stuff. Even not my son, he's uh, nine now. He's got his own drum set and he's uh, doing his thing, you know. Yeah, another thing I was interested in reading up on you guys, it, it seems like that um, despite being a metal band, you have you have um, toured with um, not only a huge national acts, but like such diverse, um, actually everything from, um, you know, Stone Temple Pilots, Life of Agony, Hell Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. as far as Hell Yeah, you mentioned the legendary Vinnie Paul. Was he yeah. still around when you, you played with them? Yes, yes, yeah. It was, it was, that show was probably, I'm bad with times, man, but I'd say maybe a year or two before he passed. You know what I mean? Oh. So maybe like six years ago, seven years it was a while. It was at the uh, Starland Ballroom. Oh wow, wow! Yeah. In uh, Sayreville, New Jersey. That's big. Yeah. 
and, and another um you got on the new album i understand you got 10 tracks and there's one cover the cover kind of i think will surprise people it's not not an obvious choice i when uh, people think of okay second scan metal band like you guys i don't think they ex ever expect you to cover a chicago song but it's a pretty pretty rocking song yeah 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 um it's definitely cool i forget how that came about i think either zach or somebody in the band uh brought up you know how about this and where the horn parts are i'll do the guitar and stuff and we we just jammed it one day and it just it, it came out the way you guys are going to hear it you know yeah I, I know it's on the new album but um i just um i, I did a in uh, prepping for an interview today i went on youtube earlier i i, I just typed in um second scan 25 six to four and it was you guys were actually it was a live video of you guys performing at one of your shows and so oh, okay. i guess you performed it before so that's pretty cool because again okay. people think of chicago they they don't think of um county yeah. metal you know <laughs> we also did another cover back before this one um land down under for men at work which is really weird you know but it, that was just another thing that just popped up and we did like a hard rock metal version of it and uh it worked it, you know what I mean? We made it work, you know, so. I, I guess you kind of answered my question I get ready to ask, which is, um, mm -hmm. that's pretty fun to do. Like, um, again, who would who would expect you guys to cover, of all things, a minute work song? Now, when you do something like that, is it necessarily because you guys really uh, dug minute work or you just thought it was a cool song and we'd like to see what we could do with it, have some fun? Have some uh, fun you know, I, I think it's more like a lot of bands, like, do – the same genre sure sure when they cover it and to me that's like i'd rather just listen to the original song you know what i mean like why would you know what i mean but um when we do it you know we, we, we try and just rock it up a little bit make it a little metal make it a little more straightforward and you know and uh fit with what what we do and uh yeah man it's just uh we don't, we like, we don't yeah. want to do the typical thing we like grabbing something that's like mm -hmm. totally healed you know like even you, you look at a band like Tesla, they had a huge hit with that song um, "Signs." Funny thing yeah. was, they had a bigger hit with it than the original artist, and they kind of rocked it up a little, made it yeah, yeah, made it their own. And um, and that's pretty cool, you know. And uh, speaking of, um, a lot of people are doing stuff like that, like uh, George Lynch and Jeff Pilson from Dawkins. They just okay. put out this heavy hitters album, and and it, it's cover tunes, but like they, they cover like a Duran Duran song and different folks you wouldn't expect them to cover you know being an hard yeah. rock band like Dokken and it's pretty cool you know to check some stuff out James Rivera I think he just put out an EP like a solo EP I forget what the band's called metal or something but um different kind of fun uh, songs that were originally pop tunes by pop artists that he kind of metaled it up yeah 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 that's awesome man yeah we like that's what we like to do take something that's like left field and just try and make it our own instead of just copying what was there yeah. and why, 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 if you're going to do a carbon copy, why do it, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think, too, uh, doing something like that, being a metal band, it makes it a little more fun. That um, How fun is it for you to um, cover a song, like, let's say, by Minute Work, and then your hardcore metal fans go and check out the original tune, and they, oh, wow, this is what this originally was. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and then you guys are, you, you, you um, a great metal band like you guys, you're, you're turning the metal heads on to pop, uh, pop music. Yeah, it's 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 just it's just something different, you know. Like we all grew up with different styles of music. Each guy in the band, we, we all, you know, of course, love rock and metal. But um, you know, some guys are more into like southern rock, and some yeah, sure. guys are into like uh, really heavy, really really heavy Cookie Monster vocals. Yeah, yeah, so, vocals. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, don't get me wrong. I love heavy vocals, but they gotta have flavor and. Well, even you know, like you know, I love Slayer, but li li I'll be honest. Um. Not too much melody going on there, but see, see, yeah, yeah. yeah. I no, mean, I've been like I've been listening to lately. Um, the Steel Woods. I don't know if you ever heard those guys. They're like a yeah. they're like a Southern rock kind of band. Uh, and they're I, I, that's all I've been listening to the last couple months. You know, just uh, I, I try and listen, listen to different stuff than what I play. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. stale. You know what I mean? And then I absorb from other styles and we bring it in you know like because like i said we're not just hard rock and metal sure. you no know, we got we got some stuff in there that's like got a little bluesy kind of southern rock kind of feel in there and jesse's big on, on on like 
um, you know, like Leonard Skinner and um, Ronnie Van Sant, you know, and all that stuff. So, you trying to put metalheads listen to, you know, I mean, um, and like I would, I, I would think too, it makes you not only a, a stronger musician listening to different types of music, but if you're at all involved in the writing um, or crafting the songs, um, more rounded musician, you know, being able to write um, different types of music even. Yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. Like every, there's not like one guy in the band that's like the main yeah. songwriting guy. Like everybody contributes, whether it be the guitar players come up with a little riff, or the bass player starts playing something, and then I'll throw a beat to it. Or if I come up with a little drum, like a like on the toms, or you know, come up with a little tribal beat or something. And you know, that's how the songs usually start. And each guy, I would say, these songs wouldn't be what they are without each individual member doing what they do. You know, what I, mean? I know drummers don't typically. It depends on who we're talking about, of course. Uh, we get, don't we typically... get the end of the stick, bro. We always get the end of the stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just drummer, sit there and play. <laughs> And I think that's why it's it's important, uh, like even watching the video, like I said, one of the things I noticed was just how front and center you, the drummer, were, Tommy. Um, you don't see that too too much. And and even just watching the video, I'm like, I, I'm thinking, man, I bet this guy live, he's a powerhouse drummer. <laughs> well, the thing with me playing drums is like, I was never into like flashy, like overplaying. And you see these guys and they're great and they're doing these blast beats and all this stuff. And I'm like, I just like to play for the song. You know what I mean? Like when I like the power of the riff yeah. compelled. You know when I hear that's them, important. I hear the that's riff. important. I get what you're saying, but um, also like in watching the video for Small, I was really noticing you. Like I said, not um, because um, again, uh, just watching the video, I could tell you're not a drummer that just kind of sits there and just kind of keeps the beat. You're a little I more involved. Simple, yeah, simple but spicy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where where it, where it should be. You know, that's that's the way I've always been. You know. <laughs> And so, Tommy, let me ask you, um, what is there something, you know, just I'm looking for, like, maybe a fun little fact that um, you think fans would be surprised to know about you, something that a lot of people might not know or be surprised to learn about you? Uh, might be surprised to learn about me, huh? No. Not really. No, you're you're no. pretty much what you see is what you get, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, you know, like, I have no filter, man, sometimes, and, uh, you know, that's one thing. <laughs> uh no, but uh, no, I like I like southern rock and you know you and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I'm not just a metal guy, you know. I'm, I also yeah. like you know I, I like I like James Taylor. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I like I like John Denver. I like all different styles of music. You know what I mean? It's I, like, I went to I listen to everything from you know I typically like I love Kiss and White Snake, hard rock stuff like that, Deep Purple. But I also love um, stuff like the Beatles. Um, um, the Eagles, Tom Petty, you know why? Great songwriting. Um, um, those are songs that have been played on the radio almost 40, 50 years now. And, and there's a reason for that. Um, and so I think, again, even as a fan, you got to you gotta open your um, ears a little more. Like a lot of people, they don't even listen to an album all the way through. They'll just, um, or I talk to people, I'm not, I don't buy the whole album. I just buy whatever the latest single is, you know, for 99 cents. Um, get a little more involved in that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 that's a whole other thing going on now in the music industry, you know. It's, I, I uh, mean, yeah, even even knowing that I wasn't when I was going to talk to you today, um, I wasn't. Um, I, I didn't know too much about the band prior to um, the publisher reaching out to me, but I wanted to do my homework. Okay, but well, I'm going to talk to this guy. He's a drummer in the band. I better at least listen to some of the songs and know what I'm talking about. No, we're going to be talking about the single, so let's at least give that a fair listen, you know. Um, and I did, and, and and much to my surprise, I don't. I say, much to my surprise, because I don't know what what the band sounded like. So I'm like, I'm gonna talk to him, give the song a fair listen, watch the video, and then then um, you know you can sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's very important to me, you know. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, and so like, how often do you guys play out? Um, well, we've been picking up doing some more stuff. Like the, like I said earlier, the whole Corona apocalypse really yeah. put a damper with yeah. everybody and everything. Um, kind of moved things back, you know, a couple of years. Um, we uh, we are definitely we got we got like a whole other album at least of new music ready to go. We're going to be going in really soon um, and uh, getting that out. And um, we, you know, we want to. Uh, you know, with this whole thing, you know, a lot of people are saying nowadays it's good just to release singles or release, uh, you know, EPs or whatever, you know, because people yeah, don't yeah. Yeah. Saying, don't listen to the whole thing. And I kind of like, 
growing me growing up, I love having that CD or that album, and you, you look at me, it. You both, Tommy. I mean, I the, love got everything in there. You got the lyrics and the pictures and the with the guys' names and you know what they do and just that whole thing. Like, I don't know. Like when I go to buy, I like to have something. You know what I mean in my yeah. hand. A lot of people have like these little keychain things and like, yeah, my song. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> it looks like a car fab. You know, what I mean? they're, oh, they're missing. They're missing the experience. I mean, I don't know if you're old enough as I as I am, but um. You remember going to a record store? A record store, what's that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, man, definitely, definitely. You know, like when I was growing up, like like Ozzy Osbourne was like this god, you know, Metallica. Yeah. You know, now they post, you know, every day. Uh, you can just go, uh, you know, look up on Twitter or whatever the hell they go on, and I'm eating a ham sandwich. You know, it's like there's no mystique anymore. There's no, uh, you know, it's 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 it definitely lost something. You know. <laughs> Like, I remember first time seeing, uh, like, Number of the Beast, you know, when I was a, a young uh, lad in the record store. I have no idea what it was. Just thinking, I don't know what the hell this is, man, but it looks so cool. I have to get this, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was the devil. Or even seeing Kiss for the first time, you're not sure what that was. It's like, are these human beings? Are these cartoon characters? What the hell is this, you know? And um, and and I've been a fan ever since of that stuff. And, and see, back in the day, you would be loyal to your bands, like, Okay, yeah. you knew when the album was coming out, you'd go out and buy it. You'd go, you'd go see them in concert when they came to your town, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, like bands like you were saying, like uh, Iron Maiden and uh, Judas Priest and all that stuff. That was my older brother who listened to that stuff. But I used to sneak into his album, his, uh, his room when he wasn't home and put it on. It would scare the shit out of me, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like hearing the, the first Black Sabbath album and stuff. You know, my stuff growing up was like, you know, I was in J- Jersey and... Uh, you know, like bands like Skid Row um, and Pantera, they were my, they were my bands when I was like, you know, just becoming, you know, becoming a teenager or something. You know what I mean? So like, that was my, uh, that was my my stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I got into more other bands like uh, like Snot yeah. and um, uh, what else? Nothing Face. Well, I was a big fan of the band. Remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they were, um, you know, just different, different, different things, man. You know. But it's not the same. It's not the same anymore with uh, how music, like when you have that, they, they seem that like connection. That connection. Like, they seem like gods, you know. And now it's like they're just like you know. You real. I guess you get older too, and you're just like you're just regular dudes, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and then I, I, I imagine too, once you start becoming a professional musician in your life yourself, you know, and you start seeing you know kind of how this is done. You go out and you play the shows. You you go in the studio, record record an album. Um, you, you kind of like okay, so this is this is what these guys went through, you know. I'm doing what they were doing, you know. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So you were asking about shows and stuff. We um we're trying to do more. We're trying to do more and more. A lot of places did close down and um never open back up mm-hmm. because of uh, I guess you know, yeah, financial reasons and mm-hmm. different things, you know. Um. Uh, so th- we th- we're doing some things. We're branching out. We're talking to some different people and uh. We're get, definitely got some things in the works. Definitely, like I said, we got the um, we got a whole bunch of new material. We're gonna be going in probably before the uh, before the new year and recording some new stuff. Uh, the only show we got as of right now is September twenty second uh, in Seaside Heights with Sponge. Uh, I believe the place is called EJ's. Okay, okay um, yeah. And, and so you guys, I assume, are opening for them. You're opening band. You're opening band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 us, another band, Corvid Corpus, and uh, uh, and Sponge. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun night, man. You think you'll be playing mostly songs off the new album, or kind of um, a combination of old stuff and new stuff? I, um, I don't know because we're just about to do that. We're just about to get our set ready for what we're gonna yeah, be yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. We find out our set times and all that stuff. Uh, but um, I'm sure we'll do our regular thing. You know what I mean? We're gonna do it. You know, we're gonna play some of our heavier stuff. We're gonna play some of our more melodic stuff. Everything we got, even if we get a little lighter mm-hmm. or, or play a little more um, clean guitar stuff, we always go into something heavy or something groovy. Sure, sure. You know, it always has. It's it always it's always there. But we do yeah. have you know, um, uh, you know, every rocker got his soft side. Sure. What was that? What was yeah, that? Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> oh sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, kiss uh, like kiss a uh, rock and roll all night. You cannot not do that song. You know, that's that's got to always be in the set. Um, 
you know, Molly Crew got all his do like smoking in the boys' room or home sweet home. Um, you just got those songs, you know, you you have to do. Um, and I'd imagine um, when you guys go out and play live, um, you're not playing it like it's just on the record. You're getting a little heavier, a little harder, a little more yeah, in your face, a little more um, adrenaline behind it. You know, I, mean, but I always got, I always watch my time, make sure I yeah, keep yeah. it at bay. But live, you play a little bit. You, you know, you put a little bit more, you know, a little bit more oomph in there. You know. And, and but, as far as coming up with the set list, I imagine the hardest part is um, knowing how much um, stuff up a new album to put versus the classic stuff, right? Yeah, we do have some songs that people like to hear, a couple of our uh, older stuff. But, you know, it's been because of the Corona apocalypse. Once again, you know, we've been, you know, we didn't release. We had a lot of music we were sitting on. So we were getting, we wanted to get it out, you know. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to decide, you know, which one I'm sure most of our, you know, newer stuff will be there, but we're definitely going to throw a couple, couple uh, oldies but goodies in there, you know? I, know. I know a lot of bands, you know, the bands took two approaches during that time. They, there are some bands that said, okay, we're not doing anything. We're not even going to write or record any new music till this is all over, which I thought was stupid. And then you had other bands do what you guys did and we're just going to stockpile material and whatever we come up with, you know, we'll be ready to go. Um, yeah. Very much like you. I know this other guy plays in like three different bands. He told me, my next four albums are already in the can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's you know, like, at first it was like, okay, we're just staying home, and it's like, you know what? That's boring. <laughs> I'm fine. You're fine. You know, uh, everybody's fine. Let's get together and you know keep things rolling like we always have. You know, we've always like that's with the name Second Skin. It's like that's our the music is like you gotta have thick skin to be a, a musician and deal with the music and the industry and everything. For sure. So. Uh, you know, like uh, we, we we get together and uh, just keep keep things rolling, keep writing and writing. You know, and, and you know, uh, um, like also, um, social media is kind of a necessary evil. I mean, it's good; it helps you guys promote your music and stuff. Um, and, and there was even what I loved about during the um, COVID stuff and the lockdowns was bands kind of got creative. You saw a lot of bands start to have um, these online events. Okay, well, we can't play live, but we're gonna have a special event. You know, join us. Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And, you know, yeah. we'll play acoustic, acoustically or whatever from our backyard or our living room. And the, I, I really love that because it, it allowed bands to get creative. Of course, though, the more and more of that started happening, Facebook all of a sudden, okay, you're going to use our platform. We need to be uh, monetized for that. <laughs> yeah, I think we were actually supposed to do something like that at this one club where they were going to have nobody in there. Yeah. And they were gonna have us play and do like a live feed, like with like one camera. And I'm like, all right, you know, it's kind of, it's I guess it's something, you know what I mean? It's kind of, right. you know. Um, but then they wound up uh, no, closing do. down or whatever, so that never happened. <laughs> well, you're back, you're back playing live, and that that I think's most, you know. And again, again, back to the band's logo, it, it just is so cool looking. I was curious, um, have you ever seen a, a fan tattoo the band's logo or anything like that? Hmm. Uh, well, <laughs> we had a different. It was, uh, it was the same first lineup of this band. Uh, we were a different band with a different singer. Okay. And, um, our, our name was a uh, backhand at the time, and uh, we had like the picture of like this dog or something like that, or, like that. And uh, my dog barks. And uh, this this younger kid that was into our band went and got the tattoo of it. You know what I mean? And then. And then we weren't a band anymore. I felt bad. I was like, damn, poor kid. You know, he's got the tattoo. He's, but, got, you a know. Story. he's got a story now. And this band that once existed, I just love the man. I mean, um, that's why you almost have to do a reunion for that one guy and invite him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, like I said, we were the same band, yeah, but with a different, different singer. And then we became what we are now. But uh, oh, cool. yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely... Uh, it was definitely a cool thing to have somebody do that. They're like, I like your album cover. So it was like, cool, you know. <laughs> and again, Tommy, before I let you go, you know, it, it's been great talking to you and getting to know you. Um, you're welcome back here anytime um, you have anything to promote. Um, I just want to say, you know, the drummers don't typically do a lot of the talking. So do you just, um, are you just the guy that got chosen to do an interview or do you enjoy doing this? I, I, sometimes, you know, I, th I, I don't mind doing interviews. It's cool, man. I like to talk with people and, uh, you know, you're, real, you're real good at it. I just wanted to put that out there. Oh, yeah. bro, thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, no, I don't mind doing it. You know, sometimes I'll do it. Sometimes we'll do that as a group. Yeah. Sometimes just a couple other guys. You know, we take we take turns. 
You, know, you guys actually, all live in the same area? Uh, uh, um, we all live in the same area, kind of. We're like Zach is like an hour away. Okay. Mark is down in Fort Good River by like where we re where we rehearse. Uh -huh. um, it's about twenty minutes. Oh my god. Well, again, um, Tommy, the other guys are about like a half hour north. You know. I, I know it's late where you are, so I'm going to let you go. Um, uh, thanks for doing this today. And again, I'll be in touch. Um, maybe we can do it again down the line. Um, this will be going up probably in the next week. Um, I'll be sure to let um, let your publicist know, and then uh, feel free to share, post on any of your sites if you like to do that. Um, it's been great talking, you. my friend. Uh, bye -bye. No, awesome, man. Dude, you do great work, brother. Good stuff, man. Keep rocking, yeah. brother. Good you too. Stuff. You too. And we'll, we'll, we'll have you back to talk about the new album once I've had a chance to hear that in its full entirety, okay? Maybe next time I'll have a beer, man. I got too much blood in my alcohol be, be, system. Be, yeah, we want you to be yourself. Uh, this is on the internet. It's totally live. You just be yourself. All right. Cool, brother. Hey, it was good, good stuff. I'll talk to you soon, man. Okay. You too, bro brother. All right. You be good.